Okay, so now let's have a quick look at the document that they give us to use in the exam. So if we, this is it here, and it's called the PPL CPL workbook. Okay, and it's around about 22 pages long. There's another one that's 56 pages long. This is the one you're allowed to use in the examination. Now, as you can see here, this one is configured for six seats, loading system echo, and it's got the instructions for use. Now, you can pause that if you want to read it all. But importantly, it refers to figure 10 on page 20, and then down here, it reports uh, refers to figure 11 on page 21. So here's uh, figure 10, and this one here is figure 11. Now, I'll just rotate those clockwise and reduce them slightly so you can see. Now, so that's figure 11 and that's figure 10. Now, what the hell do these mean to someone that's never seen Echo before? Okay, so basically they talk about these index units. And what is an index unit? Well, one index unit equals 10,000 kilogram millimeters. Now, if you think back to our seesaw example, to get this thing to balance out, wherever our pivot point is, the force on one side needs to equal another. So if this box here was 100 kilo at one meter, that's 100 kilogram meters, because it's just 100 times one. This one here was 33.33 kilograms times three meters is 100 kilogram meters. That is in balance, okay? If we shifted that, we would need to, uh, if we shifted it back to two meters, then that would now only equal 66 and this end would be way heavier. It would be out of balance. So we'd neither need to shift that or we'd need to add weight to this side to get it to balance back out. Likewise, if we increased that to 100 kilos, that would now be 100 kilos times 3 meters would be 300 kilogram meters. And that would be very, very tail heavy. So you can see by either changing where the item is located or the size of it, we can get things to balance out. Now these are in kilogram meters. So what happens when we try and convert these to kilogram and millimeters? Well, there's a thousand millimeters. So there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. There's 10 millimeters in each centimeter. So that's a thousand millimeters per meter. So we need to times this number by a thousand. We're going to get equals a hundred thousand kilograms uh, millimeters. And we're going to add three zeros to that because we're going to times that by a thousand and we need to change it to the unit that we're using which is on our index units. Okay so now you can see why we call them index units because when we Dealing with these, they're huge numbers. Whereas when we divide that by 10,000, then we're only talking about 10 index units. So it make, makes it much easier to add and subtract, divide, etc. Okay, so let's just do a little example. This is figure 10 and let's have a bit of a play. So here's 100 kgs. Let's add 100 kgs to the main fuel tanks. And it tells us that that is pretty much equal to, there's 20, there's 10, so that's 18 index units. So let's just do a little bit of maths and so you can see how that works out. So if you come back up to this page on the ECHO instructions, you'll see here that the uh, left main tank and the right main tank are at a distance of 1780 millimeters from the datum. So now if we draw that up and we put the 100 kilo, there's the datum, so we've moved our pivot pointer there, 1780 millimeters times 100, so 1780 times 100 is 178,000. 78,000. You can imagine what it's like trying to work that sort of number. What we said was that that, that is uh, an index unit equals 10,000 kilogram millimeters. So what happens when we divide that by 10,000 is we get 17.8. And if you remember our echo chart here, when we came to it and we went to 100 kilos, look at what happened. We came across, we hit the main fuel tank, and we go down and it's 18, good enough for 18 moment index units. So when it comes to echo, what is an index unit? It's 10,000 kilogram millimeters, or just an easy way to do the maths. And we can get it off this chart 
or we can do it mathematically by multiplying out the load like we have in this diagram here. Okay, so you just multiply out how many kilos by how many millimeters, get that, divide it by 10,000, and then you've got your index units.